in the lightning-fast world of cryptocurrency, truly staying informed feels like a constant uphill battle, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Huh? Information floods in, often leaving us with uh, more questions than answers. You, our listener, are likely looking for clarity, those sharp insights, and that satisfying aha moment, all without feeling completely swamped. It's a real challenge. The sheer volume of data out there can be, well, overwhelming, making it tough to pinpoint what's genuinely significant and what's just noise. And that's precisely why we're here. Hmm. On the deep dive, our mission is to cut through all of that. We've taken a stack of your sources, primarily recent YouTube analyses from various crypto channels, and we're here to extract the most important nuggets of knowledge about CASPA or KAS. Yep, trying to distill it down. Our goal is to distill what's truly impactful about its technology, its current market standing, and all the buzzing speculation about its future. And these sources offer a really compelling mix from, you know, deep dives into CASPA's technical advancements to analyses of its market movements. Mm -hmm. And even some fascinating insider perspectives on potential major exchange listings, stuff you don't always hear. So today we're really going to dig into one core question. Is COSPA genuinely on the cusp of a major breakthrough or are market realities and um, underlying challenges still holding it back? Let's unpack this. Sounds good. Where do we start? Well, the first ripple in the pond that got everyone talking recently about COSPA wasn't a tech announcement, but a single cryptic social media post. Ah, the Binance tweet. Exactly. On July 1st, Binance posted a tweet hinting at block-level parallelization and 10 BPs. Why did that specific post ignite such excitement within the CASPA community? Right. What's truly, I'd say, revolutionary about that post and why it resonated so much is how directly it pointed to CASPA's fundamental architecture, okay. block-level parallelization. It means that unlike traditional blockchains, which process transactions one block at a time, kind of like a single-lane highway. Yeah, slow going sometimes. Uh, yeah. Very slow. Caspa's block DAG architecture, underpinned by its ghost DAG protocol, allows multiple blocks to be created and validated concurrently. Think of it like a multi-lane superhighway for data. Okay, so much faster potential. Dramatically better scalability by processing many blocks simultaneously. And with its recent Rust migration, Caspa now processes 10 blocks per second, that's 10 parallel blocks. For context, in the blockchain world, that kind of speed and efficiency is considered absolutely nuts. Nuts. And 10 blocks per second. Can you help us understand why that speed is so revolutionary? Like, what real-world problems does it solve that existing chains struggle with? Well, think about transaction finality, uh, network congestion, right. those bottlenecks. Right, the usual complaints. Exactly. At 10 lots per second, COSPA approaches the speed of like traditional payment systems, Visa, MasterCard, that kind of thing. Wow. This virtually eliminates long wait times and, crucially, high fees during peak usage. It's not just fast. It's fast enough to open doors for completely new applications that simply aren't viable on slower blockchains. Like what? Things like real-time point-of-sale payments, high-frequency trading directly on a decentralized ledger, or even fully on-chain gaming that requires instant feedback. It's a fundamental shift in what a blockchain can actually do. Okay, that makes sense. And it wasn't just cryptic tweets, right? We heard from an insider, Wolfie, who revealed that Binance has been hammering Caspa with tech questions for the last six weeks straight. Yeah, that was interesting. Is that common for an exchange to go that deep before a listing. What kind of questions are we talking about and what does it signal about Binance's due diligence process compared to, say, others? That level of intense technical questioning is certainly not typical for every single listing, no. It absolutely signals deep ongoing due diligence. Binance isn't just looking at market cap or hype. They're scrutinizing the underlying code, the security protocols, the scalability mechanisms, really kicking the tires. Makes sense. Wolfie's view, and it seems plausible, is that they're likely waiting for the precise moment when it makes business sense. Ah, the business angle. Always. That means when the broader market is in a huge uptrend and retail interest truly returns, ensuring maximum profitability from trading volume and new user acquisition, they are a business after all, and they prioritize the commercial upside. So they're playing the long game, waiting for optimal market conditions. But it wasn't just Wolfie. We saw other hinty hints from CZ himself and Binance on Twitter. Right, those were kind of fun. Things like questions about the blockchain trilemma, that balance of security, scalability, and decentralization. The classic problem. And even a silhouette with a hat identical to Casper core developer Michael Sutton's. 
Many interpreted these as attempts to test how big the community was. Yeah, it definitely looks like they were doing their own sort of uh, market research, gauging community engagement and potential public interest before making a big move. They're not just looking at the tech, they're assessing the existing user base and the potential for rapid adoption if they list it. Now, for many of you listening, the thought is probably, but we've been waiting for a Binance listing for ages. Mm -hmm. Understandably. Speculation dates back to December 2023, and Wolfie even said he thought a listing would happen two Christmases ago. What's been the core holdup? Nicholas Sisses Mall, the ex-head of listing for Binance, provided some really crucial context here. He highlighted that Caspa is revolutionary and foreign to what Binance is accustomed to. Meaning? It's not just another EVM-compatible chain, you know, something they've integrated dozens of times. This demands significant time for full integration and, importantly, code auditing, especially because Binance is very, very strict with these processes due to ongoing compliance issues, can't afford mistakes. Right, the regulatory environment is tough. Exactly. Sissus Mall even pointed out the sheer complexity of COSPA's breakthrough layer one tech, stating something like, only five people in the world understand how it works. Maybe an exaggeration, but it makes the point. Wow. And a unique point is that COSPA doesn't have a foundational wallet to pay for listing. Ah, the listing fee issue. Yeah. In the world of exchange listings, that's often standard practice. Projects pay for prime placement. Without that, COSPA becomes, in their eyes maybe, a bigger risk to reward for exchanges used to that model. So it's not a simple yes or no decision. It's this deep, complex, technical integration combined with Binance's strategic market timing, and their own internal policies and risk assessment. Precisely. But despite these hurdles, the fact that Binance continues to hammer tech questions and actively converse with COSPA, that is genuinely reassuring. It's positive proof of their sustained interest, at least. Okay, so that sounds like a purely technical and business decision for Binance. But what if there's more to it? Hmm. What if, as some sources suggest, there's a more strategic, even defensive reason for the delay? We heard a contrasting perspective from Dr. Martin Heisbeer of Uphold. He suggests that Coinbase and Binance might actually be avoiding listing COSPA because they see it as a massive threat to their own chains, like BNB chain. What's the basis for that claim? Well, if we connect this to the bigger picture, it really comes down to speed and fundamental design versus these established ecosystems. Okay. COSPA's block time is 0.1 seconds. That delivers 10 blocks per second, as we said. Compare that to BNB's recently upgraded 0.75 seconds achieved via their Maxwell hard fork. Which was a big deal for them. It was a significant upgrade for BNB. But Caspa's speed is still fundamentally superior, especially when you consider its underlying decentralization. That kind of performance coupled with a truly decentralized architecture. Yeah, it could indeed be perceived as a direct threat to existing Layer 1s and especially many Layer 2 solutions that power their exchanges and generate revenue. And what's particularly intriguing here is that many existing Layer 2 solutions, which utilize these centralized sequencer schemes, generate insane revenue. Hmm. Could these powerful entities truly be trying to suppress CASPA to protect their income streams. It definitely raises an important question for you, the user. Many people might not realize their favorite layer two services, while fast and convenient, are often centralized. Meaning what, exactly, for the average person? It means a single entity controls the order and execution of transactions. And yes, theoretically, they can stop the transaction whenever they want to, censor it, delay it. Okay, that's not ideal for decentralization. Not at all. COSPA, on the other hand, prioritizes true decentralization and aims to become the infrastructure for the entire blockchain world with its ability to verify ZK proofs. ZK proofs or zero knowledge proofs, you mentioned them. For someone who might not be deep into cryptography, what are those and why are they so crucial for making COSPA the infrastructure for the entire blockchain world? Okay, ZK proofs are a bit like proving you have a key to a locked door without actually showing the key itself. Like a magic trick. Sort of. In crypto, it means verifying a transaction or a piece of information without revealing any underlying sensitive data. This is massive for both privacy and scalability. How so? It allows for more complex operations on chain while keeping things efficient and secure. Absolutely essential if you want to build a truly robust, private, and scalable blockchain infrastructure that could handle global demand. Got it. And this whole situation 
it's kind of reminiscent of past attempts to suppress and deny Bitcoin or even the Internet itself when they first emerged. They challenged existing power structures. It's like a classic battle. Yeah, it's a battle between established, often centralized revenue streams and new, potentially disruptive, decentralized paradigm. This notion of suppressing innovation to protect revenue streams is a big one. But let's broaden our view beyond just exchange listings for a moment. What is CASPA building outside of these listing battles? What's their long-term play? Because it's clearly more than just being a store of value, isn't it? No, not at all. While its scarcity and technical merits definitely give it store value potential, CASPA's grander plan is much bigger. They aim to build a full DeFi ecosystem. Okay, DeFi on CASPA. Exactly. They have smart contracts launching soon, which are designed to be compatible with Ethereum and eventually other major chains like Solana. Interoperability focus, then. A huge undertaking, yeah. Hmm. Positioning Caspa as a foundational layer for a truly decentralized financial future. Not just a faster coin, but a whole platform. And what's Caspa's competitive edge in that ambitious vision? It aims to combine Bitcoin level of decentralization and security with the high throughput and efficiency of newer proof of stake chains. Mm -hmm. We've also heard it has a track record. 19 battles, 19 wins against fast proof of stake cryptos. That's a bold claim. It is a strong claim, yeah. yeah. And they seem to be backing it up with significant upcoming developments to become a serious operator in the DeFi space. Like what's on the roadmap? We're looking at Capital Smart Contracts and the Igra Lab testnet coming out. Uh, supposedly this month, the Casplex mainnet is also in the pipeline. Okay, so core infrastructure. Right. And even further down the road, the ZEX or Zero Emission Trading Exchange, along with Warp Core and the Gigawatt Stablecoin, these are projected to be live and in pilot by Q4 this year. That's a lot coming soon. It all speaks to a really comprehensive ecosystem build, aiming to provide a full suite of financial tools on their super fast decentralized base layer. Okay, now let's zoom out a bit and look at Caspa's current market dynamics. What's the snapshot right now in terms of its price and market position? Where does it stand today? Sure. Caspa has generally been hovering around uh, seven to eight cents lately. Its market cap is just shy of $2 billion. Daily trading volume fluctuates, you know, as is typical in crypto. To the end of volatility. Yeah. Recently, it bounced off a six cent support zone and is attempting to reclaim that eight cent level. What's particularly interesting for those watching the charts, maybe, is that the Mass CD histogram has shown divergence. Okay. Mass CD divergence. Uh -huh. For someone who isn't charting daily, what's the simplified takeaway here about Caspa's potential? potential near-term price from that signal. Essentially, it's like the market's momentum or maybe its underlying strength is going one way, but the price isn't quite following suit yet. Like they're out of sync. Exactly. When you see divergence, it often signals a kind of coiled spring. A potential shift in direction is maybe building up. In Caspa's case, depending on whether it's bullish or bearish divergence, it suggests that the current trend might be losing steam and a reversal could be around the corner. Something to watch for those considering entry or exit points. Interesting. And how do broader market influences play into Caspa's potential movements, specifically things like global liquidity, M2 money supply? I understand that's been on a strong uptrend since January and historically leads Bitcoin price increases by a few months. That's correct. M2 is a big macro factor. And Bitcoin right now, well, it's struggling a bit to hit new record highs. But it is showing strength around the $108,000 level. Holding steady-ish. Yeah, with potential maybe to retest $109,000, $110,000, and even an all-time high eventually. But for altcoins like Caspa to truly shine, Bitcoin dominance needs to show some weakness. Let the alts have their turn. Right. This is the concept of an altcoin season, where altcoins have historically supercharged during Bitcoin's final big push, leading to an average, I think one source said an eight-fold increase in market cap for altcoins overall. Wow, eight-fold? Yeah, it can be dramatic. So while Caspa has its own internal developments driving interest, its broader market performance is still deeply tied to these larger macroeconomic and crypto market cycles. Bitcoin leads the dance. So... The state could be set for altcoins, including Caspa, to make significant moves if Bitcoin continues its upward trajectory and then eventually allows altcoins to catch up. What about the specific technical outlooks for Caspa itself? Are they all pointing in the same direction or are there divergent views from the sources we looked at? Definitely divergent views, which is key for anyone trying to make sense of the market noise. It's not a clear picture. Okay, give us the bearish case first. 
All right. Some technical analyses present bearish signals. They're pointing to things like daily bearish divergence and overbought RSI's indicators that suggest the asset might be overbought and due for a correction. A pullback. Yeah, potentially a sharp decline of around 40%, according to one analysis. The monthly stochastic, another momentum indicator, was described pretty bluntly as cooked, being down in the gutter. Ouch. And the 50-week and 200-day moving averages are also suggesting a bearish trend currently. For COSPA to become a winner, in this view, the price needs to break and hold above the 13.5 cent level. Otherwise, there's a significant risk of going lower. Okay, that sounds pretty gloomy for a moment there. But there's also a bullish side, right? Are there technical analysts who see a different path for CASPA? Yes, absolutely. There's always another side in crypto markets. Others point to weekly stochastic RSIs trying to make a bullish cross, which would signal a potential shift back to upward momentum. The opposite signal. Right and potential bullish divergence on the four hour chart. So looking at shorter timeframes. Key support is seen between roughly 6.38 and 7.2 cents. A rally above 8.1 cents would be the first bullish indication. And the targets. Speculative targets for a potential third wave upward are around 10.9 cents. Longer term bullish targets are identified around 0.11 less 0.125 cents, and some even looking way up at 0.2 to 0.43 cents. Which would be? That would suggest a potential 700% uh, increase from current prices, roughly. Yeah. So, you know, hugely divergent technical views on the short and long term. It really reflects the complexity and maybe the volatility of predicting this market. Absolutely. One thing that seems consistent across all sources, though, regardless of their technical outlook, is the acknowledged power of the COSPA community. Oh, yeah, that comes up again and again. It's been described as powerful, diamond hands, and full believers. The Kraken listing becoming their most viewed tweet ever with 1.3 million views. That's pretty compelling evidence of that uh -huh. strength, isn't it? It's incredibly significant. That community power feeds directly into the speculation we talked about earlier that major exchanges might actually be farming engagement with COSPA hints. Meaning deliberately teasing them. Yeah, possibly. Deliberately teasing the community to see if it's worth for them to take the risk in buying COSPA out of their own pocket for the listing. As we said, exchanges aren't generally used to paying for listings themselves. They prefer the projects pay them. Right. So they need to be convinced by massive demonstrable public interest that the investment will pay off in trading fees and new users. It really highlights how community conviction can become a crucial factor in the decisions of even the largest, most centralized exchanges. It's a force. So wrapping this up, mm. what does this all mean for you, the learner, as you navigate this complex world of cryptocurrency and try to understand CASPA? Well, I think understanding CASPA involves navigating both its, frankly, groundbreaking technical innovation and the complex strategic plays happening among major market players. Tech versus market games. Pretty much. It highlights that while the technology itself is compelling, the path to broader adoption and higher valuation depends on a confluence of factors. You need internal development, like those upcoming smart contracts actually launching and working well. Makes sense. You need favorable external market conditions like Bitcoin's performance and the arrival of a genuine alt season. Timing. And you need the evolving willingness of these big centralized entities, the exchanges, to either embrace or perhaps continue to resist disruptive technologies like COSPA. It's a mix of all three. And there you have it, our deep dive into COSPA's ambitious technology, the market realities it faces, and all that speculation swirling around its potential major exchange listings. It truly brings into focus a fascinating tension, doesn't it? Given COSPA's bold claims about speed and decentralization and the inherent conflict with existing, very profitable layer two solutions, what does the future of decentralized finance truly demand? Yeah, it raises big questions. Is it purely about having superior technology? Or does mass adoption ultimately hinge on these established giants deciding whether to embrace or continue to resist disruptive innovation like COSPA? And maybe how much of a project's long-term success is really about its foundational code versus the persistent, almost unwavering conviction of its community, that diamond hands aspect. Food for thought. We hope this deep dive helps you consider these complexities as you continue your own learning journey in the crypto space. Thanks for diving deep with us today.